So we'll start by settling the body. Finding a stable, comfortable, upright position, serviceable for meditation. So we think about keeping our feet flat and our back straight, torso open, hands in the lap right over left with the palms upturned and the thumbs gently touching. Our eyes are gently closed or slightly open, making sure we let in enough light to remain alert. We try to avoid slouching or leaning, but we also let go of any unnecessary tension in the body, relaxing into a stable, comfortable, upright position. Then begin to let go of attending to the outside environment. Allowing sights and sounds to just be as they are without investigation. Moving your awareness inward. holding it to the body and mind. Begin to concentrate that awareness by attending closely to the physical sensation of the air, moving into and back out of the tip of the nostrils. Noticing quickly when anything other than that one physical sensation is arising in the mind and without judgment or frustration, lifting your awareness up from that distraction and placing it gently, but firmly again and again on the breath.
And then when the mind feels more calm, generate abroad and altruistic motivation for your time. Wanting to use your time to establish and deepen beneficial ways of thinking and acting. Ways that allow oneself to remain connected to a sense of peace and ease and stability. And that naturally tends to motivate actions that benefit those around you. Also reducing, eventually eliminating painful ways of thinking and acting. Ways that are harmful for oneself and often motivate actions that harm others. Engaging in this process of genuine inner transformation in order to be of greater and greater benefit to sentient beings. And we'll investigate that motivation more deeply in the contemplation of learning to reduce our preoccupation, our unhealthy preoccupation with trying to amass comfort for oneself at the expense of others and trying to reverse that tendency trying to cultivate a view that cherishes others We begin by trying to cultivate the awareness that I and all sentient beings are exactly the same in wanting happiness and wanting to avoid any suffering. Regardless of their outward appearance, their views, their opinions. In their way, they are trying to secure happiness as they understand it and avoid suffering. Just like I place myself at the center of my story, so too do they place themselves at the center of their story.
that's their motivation to avoid suffering and to be happy is just as strong as mine is. We are all completely equal in the extent to which we deserve to accomplish our goals. Now pause here and try to connect with that open, more spacious, interdependent view. trying to cultivate the tendency to see things from the other sentient being's perspective. The obstacles, the triumphs of those around us are tangential to our lives, but are paramount to the sentient being actually experiencing it. So try to set some determination to begin to recognize that in our daily interactions. Thinking about moving that spotlight that's directed outward. Thinking about taking the perspective of the other. Shining that spotlight back to us from their perspective, bringing it into account intentionally. As often and consistently as possible.
And also try to recognize that the attitude of wanting to move through life, securing just our own happiness, is paradoxically the source of so much misery. Whereas the attitude that cherishes those around us as the source of openness and joy. A self-centered mind gives rise to many fears, a sense of never having enough. Constantly afraid of losing what we have. And a kind of mental frailty giving over one's happiness to external causes. Thinking that happiness depends upon things working out in the way that we would prefer, and that suffering inevitably occurs when things fail to work out as we would like. I look back over the last number of years and see if you can recognize any of those patterns. See if that seems true in your experience.
This self-preoccupation also empowers many other disturbing states of mind. We become envious of others' good fortune rather than rejoicing. We tend to be insulting or belittling when others engage in mistakes. or inconvenience us. This sort of myopic view makes it more and more difficult to practice ethics when the overriding concern is getting what we would like And this constantly being buffeted and disturbed in the mind is a fundamental obstacle to the deeper levels of concentration and the wisdom that they are able to unlock. we're able to cultivate greater and greater concern for the happiness and well-being of others, we begin to reverse and overcome all of these shortcomings. All negative minds become less powerful. under the light of cherishing others. It gives rise to deep, sustained feelings of well-being and satisfaction. This wide open perspective generates court courage in the mind instead of that frail, narrow minded, egoistic self preoccupation. And all positive qualities flow from that inner strength. So try to set a strong determination to see others as inherently important. Their needs, their desires. And cultivate a view of focusing on their well-being.
And then when you're ready, we'll come back together. And we'll dedicate. So recollect your altruistic motivation and think that by having contemplated in this way, you've actualized that motivation, created positive energy in the mind, which you freely offer for the benefit of all sentient beings without exception. You may it serve as a cause and condition to eliminate war, poverty, conflict, famines, disease, disasters, all painful inner and outer conditions. Bring to mind all of the people affected by so many mass shootings in recent weeks and strongly dedicate for the elimination of the negativity that gives rise to such cycles of violence. I'm thinking of those that have entered the bardo and are dealing with injuries and loss. I'm thinking of the healing energy of enlightened mind and activity, working for their benefit. I think may any obstacles facing the Guru's long life be completely dispelled and May I and all sentient beings come under the joyful care and guidance of enlightened beings in this moment. May we be guided and protected until we swiftly achieve that state of enlightenment. Thank you.